Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Case 67. We have a great case here. We have two coronal images through the knee, and this is a, these are mid-coronal slices at the middle of the scan. Okay, so if there's if if the coronal sequence is 16 slices, this is that image number eight, eight out of 16. So mid-coronal slice. And the question that I have for you guys is, well, on this mid-coronal slice, which of the following statements is true regarding the meniscal findings shown? This is more common on the lateral meniscus. This meniscus is less prone to tearing. The medial to lateral length is greater than eight millimeters. That's diagnostic of this uh, finding or strong association with ACL tearing. Which statement is true? And if we take a look here on the mid coronal slice, we can see, you know, this is the medial side. We see the medial collateral ligament right here. This is the medial meniscus. It has a nice triangular configuration. Remember the fibrocartilaginous structures are black or dark on MRI. We see the medial meniscus here, but along the, the lateral meniscus, it looks like the medial to lateral dimension is very large, right? So uh, we've lost the normal sort of C-shaped configuration of the meniscus. This in fact is a discoid meniscus, right? This, this medial to lateral dimension is too big. There's too much meniscal tissue. We call that a discoid meniscus. And of course, this is more common on the lateral side, making A the finding here, right? This meniscus is definitely more prone to tearing. Uh, and the medial lateral length is usually greater than 14 millimeters on the mid coronal slice. That's what's diagnosing. More than 14 millimeters on a mid coronal slice is diagnostic of a discoid meniscus, and this has no association with ACL tearing. So, nice example of what a discoid meniscus looks like. Remember, a normal meniscus is C shaped, when, but you, when you have too much meniscal tissue centrally, it kind of looks like a disc, and that's a discoid meniscus, right? And this happens because of failure of resorption of that central tissue, that central part of the tissue in embryology gets failed to be resorbed, leading to a discoid meniscus. This is present in up to 3% of the population and actually in up to 20% of patients, it can actually be bilateral, right? So uh, important to keep in mind, and we see this more commonly on the lateral side, but that's not to say that the medial side can't be affected. I've seen medial discoid menisci and meniscus as well. So the way we diagnose this really is on an MRI, right? On a mid-coronal slice, when you get to the middle of the series, if the medial to lateral width, as I showed you, is more than equal or more than 14 millimeters, that's usually diagnostic of a discoid meniscus. Now, some people use 12 millimeters, some people use even up to 16 millimeters, depending on what textbook you use. But you know, for me, I think a safe measurement is about 14 millimeters. And there are plain film findings, like you know, some people talk about a widened lateral femoral tibial joint space. Some people talk about the fibular head being too high, but I don't find those to be very reliable, you know, quite frankly. And I think, you know, the way you really diagnose it is on a, uh, on an MRI. And of course, the lateral meniscus is more commonly involved. These are more prone to tearing, right? Uh, because they absorb more of the axial forces in the knee and there's more meniscal tissue there. More is not always better. And these can tear. This, you know, can be asymptomatic, but especially in adolescence, it can present with pain and clicking. That's typically how these patients present. And really, this is just treated conservatively, right? We, you know, with rest, ice packs, you can, if it gets very symptomatic or the tear is big, you can do an arthroscopic saucerization where they, you know, sort of remove that extra central tissue to the meniscus and shave it off to make it more of a C-shape as opposed to, to a discoid meniscus. Hope that was helpful. Very important topic, very important anatomic finding to recognize when you read MRI exams. Tune in next week for another high-yield MSK unknown case.